Like traditional sports, esports has seen its fair share of controversy, and within the Overwatch community, there are few popular figures who have been the source of more controversy than 25-year-old Daniel Defran Francesca. The Danish hitscan extraordinaire is no stranger to being in the limelight, for better or worse, and boasts an impressive following on social media. From flipping burgers to joining the Overwatch League, Defran has been through it all. And today, we're going to be diving into his history on this installment of Profiles. Defran has been a polarizing member of the Overwatch community, who has rode the highest of highs and been at the lowest of lows more than once. From working at a McDonald's to finding himself voted into play in the 2016 Overwatch World Cup for Team Denmark, Defran has been forcibly thrust into stardom time and time again, maybe before he was quite ready. Since making his debut in the pro scene, Defran has been the topic of many headlines across many news outlets, who commented on his toxic attitude and demeanor, both in a professional and more casual setting. He's blunt, direct, and not what many would describe as a subtle person. In his early prime, Defran was a ferocious inclusion to selfless gaming and made a name for himself as a rising star on their team. However, his career took a big tumble after demonstrating unsportsmanlike behavior repeatedly on officially broadcasted streams. Oh what? Fat fingered? Or maybe he's just using it to get out there uh, faster? I don't why know. is he not with his team? Defran? Um, that means the map is over. By the yeah. way, Defran has given up. Defran's given up. <laughs> I don't like what? it. Outside of a team environment, Defran shows that he is a monster on the competitive ladder. He is no stranger to being in the top 10 and has placed first many times in the past. It's clear that no matter where he chooses to play, Defran's talents are always put on display and usually followed by vocal praise for his ability. However, trailing him is also plenty of naysayers and critics. Defran is skilled without a doubt, but is far from being the Overwatch League poster boy. I'm the leader of the throwers. Defran was critically praised when he joined Selfless Gaming. As a rising DPS star, he was instrumental in helping Selfless go from a middle of the pack team in North America to a top contender. His relentless aggression and stellar tracking earned him praise for his Soldier 76 and Tracer play. Defran was key in allowing Selfless to play their hyper-aggressive style and hold even the scariest of teams in their own spawns at times. Since Defran had joined the team, Selfless was easily considered a top 3 team in the region, only narrowly losing out to some of the best teams at the time like Rogue. However, it looked like Selfless would finally catch a break after having been consistently beaten when Rogue were invited to play in Apex. With their biggest challenge out of the way, Selfless could take the next big tournament at the time with ease, the Alienware Monthly Melee, May 2017. Selfless would play Yikes in this big finals match, and it was in this series that Defran's name would really start to become widely known. Consequentially, given his behavior in this match, Defran was suspended from the Selfless Gaming roster and barred from participating in Blizzard tournaments for the foreseeable future, and many prominent members of the community very outwardly expressed their disappointment and disdain with Defran and his actions. This would mark the first time that Defran made his exit from the competitive Overwatch scene. He later announced that he had thrown the games in an attempt to get out of playing professional Overwatch, and that he had quit playing professionally altogether. He mentioned that competing and scrimming had made him very depressed and bored. On July 28, 2017, Defran posted on his Twitter, sharing his thoughts on the matter over a year later. In the post entitled, Chapter Closed, Defran explained, quote, Let's get straight to it. I did what I did to get a professional Overwatch. It was the only way. I was not sure if I would get banned or not, but I would accept it openly and very happily if it happened. I wanted to get out for a long time. Competing and scrimming made me very depressed and bored. The only thing that kept me going was streaming and enjoying the fame. Honestly, I'm probably going back to McDonald's. I would much rather jump from job to job than be a professional player. It is simply not something I enjoy and want to do in the future. I will 100% keep terrorizing ranked, Q-sniping big streamers, spawn capping, and talking shit, because that's what I enjoy to do. I tried reforming, but it simply ain't me. I chose to stay true to myself and enjoy what I enjoy, staying a man-child. We are all different, and we all have our things in life that makes it fun to live. Money and fame is not everything. I don't know what will happen to the stream. Thanks to all the fans and subscribers. I appreciate it a lot. A special thanks to Selfless Sefi, the owner of Selfless, for being probably the best human being I have ever met. 
barring over with a lot of my shit. See you later, peeps. This rather unapologetic tweet left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Many were saddened by what looked to be the definitive fall of such a skilled player. The idea that it was such a shame that someone with so much talent could not adjust or refuse to try to adjust the pressures and standards demanded of a professional. It's noteworthy to mention that other players in Selfless did not think poorly of Defran for his actions in the notorious game with him trolling. Both Brad Rajani and Imong, respectively his former coach and teammate, defended his actions. All right, I'll talk about it for a second. I just want to address this. We stopped even remotely talking about that rest of that map. We were already talking about what we were going to do next because we the map was basically it was it was done. We 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 it was over. We kind of nonchalantly chose heroes to go to the point without any communication, just naturally. We we had. We had half the people weren't even like in their chairs. Like we were already talking about what we wanted to do next map. I think we had King's Row next, maybe or something like that. Or we had something else. Like we we were done. We were already onto the next map. The thing is, is that some of us went to the point like just like naturally. Right, I'm gonna like, go I, back. That's it. Like this. there was no like. Okay, guys, we're, we're touching point. There was literally don't no no we just, no no mercy. It wasn't like what people thought it was. It wasn't like someone just no mercy no. That's basically it. Like that's it. Okay. Like, that, that was that was literally it. There was nothing else to it. That, that, that was straight up what it was. Selfless had all collectively already thrown in the towel on Oasis, and were discussing what to do on the next map, but the public and Blizzard ruled it one way, and the rest was history. The picture had been painted. That being said, it may be true that Defran had not thrown in that one instance with Selfless, but he had thrown many games and even admitted to it on his personal stream. Particularly surrounding the time during his suspension, a movement called Throw for Defran had been created, urging viewers to grief and disrupt their own games in support for Defran. If we all queue for comp right yeah, now, wow. and this is where she we could probably the legendary ruin every the single rank game there is right now. Very spicy. Is it spicy? <laughs> dude on, there's a dude on Kefri's stream. She's definitely the sausage. Is that dude on Kefri's stream? I want to know In these streams, Defran was leaping off of cliff sides, missing shots intentionally, interacting with his stream, picking heroes nonchalantly, and not giving anything remotely close to his best efforts in trying to win those games. That, on top of playing pornographic games on his Twitch stream, deservingly got him in some serious trouble. Selfless issued a statement saying that, quote, while Defran will no longer be playing with our team, we will be assisting him in finding the help, counseling, and guidance that he needs to improve his mental and emotional well-being. He is a dear friend, and we will be as supportive as possible during this time off from competitive play so that he can come back stronger and better than ever. Instead of going back to McDonald's like he said, Defran built up a popular stream, and even today, Defran is consistently one of the most popular streamers in all of Overwatch. And although he hasn't since been playing the Tier 1 scene, all the while Defran had been working on reforming, surely, although slowly. Throughout 2018, it was rumored Defran may have been picked up by a new expansion team, and this would turn out to be true as he was signed as a DPS player for the Atlanta Reign, marking his return to professional play. The entire community was surprised to see him back in the pro scene, but this would be followed by shock when he tweeted that he was done with the team, going as far as to uninstall Overwatch live on his stream. Defran posted on Twitter, quote, The end. I hate the game. I thought I could love it again. And have passion. But it's impossible. I always end up soft throwing. Contract ended. Overwatch uninstalled. McDonald's, here I come. For real though, thanks for everything you've given me, Overwatch community. Many prominent members of the scene lamented the loss of Defran once again, but he corrected himself the following day, saying, quote, Still in Atlanta rain, didn't quit like I said. I messed up. Don't know what to say except sorry to the community, my fans, and Atlanta. It wasn't debate. Sometimes I have these days and make dumb mistakes. Going forward, I'm going to stream less and focus on making myself and my team better. Now, armed with a full-time staff, strong teammates, and mentors, Defran is looking to finally break out on the big stage like so many wish they had seen sooner. Now with the right support and guidance, Defran's redemption story can begin. The question on everyone's mind now is whether or not he will succeed. Will Defran rise from the ashes anew or fly too close to the sun once again?